Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends. I'm your host, Ray Shasho. After working as an actress, dancer, singer in the United States, Durga McBroom and her sister, Lorelai McBroom, worked with Pink Floyd as backing vocalist. She went on to have a long stint with them, being the only backing vocalist to appear consistently on all of their shows, starting from the November 1987 concert at Omni Arena of a Momentary Lapse of Reason tour, up to the final concert of the Division Bell tour in October 1994. She also performed to their appearance at the 1990 Nedworth Festival and has provided vocals for the Pink Floyd live albums Delicate Sound of Thunder and Pulse and the Pink Floyd studio albums Division Bell and The Endless River, as well as David Gilmour's 2001 solo tour. Around 1989, McBroom formed the band Blue Pearl, which I love, with record producer Youth singing, playing some keyboards, and co-writing all of their material as part of Blue Pearl. She had several hit songs in the early 1990s, including Naked in the Rain, Little Brother, and a cover version of Kate Bush's Running Up the Hill, all taken from the album Naked, released in 1990 on the Big Life label. Subsequent singles... Can you feel the passion? Um, she currently tours the world singing with various bands and has recorded a second Blue Pearl album with Youth. Another album is currently in the works with her sister Lorelai, produced by our friend of the show, Dave Kersner, including some cover songs as well as original materials. She and her sister Lorelai also are featured on Steve Hackett's latest album, At the Edge of Lights be being featured on the chart-topping single Underground Railroad. Please welcome the incredible and revered background <laughs> singer of Pink Floyd, Durga McBroom, to Interviewing the Legends. Hello, Durga. Hi. Thank you so much. <laughs> man, oh, man. It's so I'm so happy to have you here. I really am. Thank you. I, uh, I need to actually uh, update you a little bit. Um, okay, my bio is a little a little out of date. Um, my All sister right. and I did put out that album. It's called Black Floyd, and it, uh, it actually okay. came out uh, July fourth, twenty twenty, and uh, it has uh, some Pink Floyd covers done by the perspective of Black women, mm -hmm. as well as some originals. Um, one uh, Gods and Lovers I co-wrote with John Karen. Right. who obviously toured with Floyd and now works with Roger Waters, uh, a song called A Girl Like That I wrote with Guy Pratt. Uh, there's a song that she wrote, uh, Forgotten How to Smile, that she wrote with Lemmy Kilmister. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so it's a pretty cool album, if I do say so myself. Oh, yeah. We're <laughs> going to talk about that. I do have that in my notes. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to promote the hell out of it also. Oh, thank um, you. What what age did you first notice that you had this incredible voice? Was it, you know, a lot of people I talk to, um, you know, like Ian Gillen from Deep Purple told me he, he first learned his voice in church, you know, he, as a kid. And a lot of people do, you know, find their voice in church. Where, where did you find your voice? What? How, how old were you? Well, I didn't really think of myself as a singer for a long time because my sister Lorelai was the singer and I was the actress. Right. So, you know, I went to UCLA as a theater arts major and then um, dropped out. And within six months, I was cast in Flashdance. Uh, but I really, uh, and, and when I was at UCLA, I started kind of, I, I got into my first band, a band called IC3. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't really realize how good I was until I was in New York with my sister. Um, Lorelai was signed to Capitol Records and she was, uh, recording an album, um, that was produced by a friend of our family, Nile Rogers. Yep. And she had me come out and do some backing vocals for her. And that's actually how I wound up with Pink Floyd. Wow. You got an incredible voice. Thank you. I got to tell you, <laughs> you made me cry. Oh, <laughs> the Pulse well, album, you. you know, uh, when I first, you know, well, the, the lineup, first of all, okay. You had Sam Brown. Then it was you, then Claudia, right? Yes. From Break Egg yes. in the Sky. Sam uh -huh. Brown Sam Brown was incredible. But then when you sung, that's when the tears flowed. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. You got such a gorgeous voice, I'm telling you. Well, uh, you know, there, there are like three movements of that song. Mm -hmm. And do you know what they are? 
What? So the first part that Sam sang is um, basically when you find out that you're dying and you're right. raging at God, and that's why it's so fiery. Then the second part is when the sadness comes over you when you realize that, you know, there's nothing you can do to stop it. You're going to die. Wow. Uh, and the regret and the all of that. And then the third part is when you find peace and acceptance. You know, I didn't know that. that. How, yeah. How could one find out about that? You know, talk to Richard, right? You have to talk to Richard. Right? <laughs> Well, that might not happen. <laughs> well, and as a matter of fact, I was just telling this to somebody last night. Um, the biggest honor I think I've been paid as a singer to date, when Richard found out that he was dying, yeah, he um, set aside funds and planned his own memorial service. You're kidding me, and, really? Oh. No, yeah. And he said who he wanted to have perform. And um, he said he wanted me, out of all the people who've ever done it, to do mm -hmm. Great Gig Sky. So at his memorial service, so that, uh, you know, that's my Grammy. Wow. You know, Richard, to me, was probably almost the most important part of Pink Floyd because the spaciness of Pink Floyd would have never happened without Richard and his keyboards. Yeah, you know? there's, there's so much about his musical sensibility that people don't take into account. Uh uh, if you ever get the chance to see, I don't know if you saw um, um, their mortal remains, the Pink Floyd exhibit. No, that I they've didn't. had. Yeah, they've had all you know in museums all over the world. Um, right. You walk through these different areas, and you know they have memorabilia and the, um, the instruments and uh, handwritten lyrics and all mm -hmm. this great stuff. And it's like a soundscape. You get a um, headset as you walk through and, you know, you'll hear different music and then hear them talking about something that you're looking at. And there's a section where you're walking through and Richard is talking about the denouement in uh, time. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it goes into breathe reprise. Mm -hmm. And there's this really bizarre sort of chord progression See, one of the cool things about working with Pink Floyd tribute bands now is um, invariably people will get certain things wrong because right. they're exactly. they're just trying to reproduce it from what they've heard. Yeah. And some of it is so particular. I get to say, no, you got to put that note in there. Mm -hmm. And and when they when it clicks and they're doing it right, they go, oh, <laughs> I love that. Um, <laughs> so you hear Richard talking about the choice that he made for the chord progression going into that. And he said, normally you would think it would go da, da, da. And he's like, but I thought I would add this. And then you hear that chord. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. and then you realize that just how, what an influence he had on the sound. He had a little bit of a jazz background too, didn't he? Yeah. He loved jazz. Yeah. And so did, so does Nick. Nick's actually a jazz drummer. Oh, huh. Me and Nick have the same birthday, by the way, January twenty seventh. Yeah, oh. I was oh, fortunate. Sorry, my phone is going off. <laughs> I was fortunate to talk to uh, Richard's son in law, get guy Guy Pratt, who's yes. a great guy. He's so funny yeah. too. I I didn't know he was a, also a comedian. Oh yeah, yeah he's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> he's awesome. But here's something you may not know: Nick Mason is one of the funniest people on the face of the planet. That I would have never guessed. So funny. I know, you think he's like some some banker or something. He would have us rolling in the van on the way to the venue. I mean, just reading the paper. I remember once we were going somewhere, uh, we were going on the way to the venue and he was reading the day's stories and some woman had seen the face of Jesus in a tortilla or something. <laughs> and, and he says, um, well, this is the supreme being we're talking about. You would think he'd find a better way to communicate with people than putting his son's face in a blancmange. <laughs> <laughs> he's just he's so, uh, just the driest, the wit driest of Sahara. He's hilarious and such a sweet mm -hmm. man. I love that guy. He's got such a, uh, you know, that, that British personality, that very, you know, kind of strict, proper personality <laughs> and i would have yeah, never but... thought in a million years he'd be funny <laughs> he's hysterical he's uh, hysterical and he's a very loving loving person too very yeah. kind yeah but tell him i did buy his solo albums and 
I think there's a song called I'm a materialist and <laughs> I did like that song. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you get a chance to see Saucer Full of Secrets, go. I, Nick I would is love playing, to. He is playing better than I've seen him play in his life. And he seems very fulfilled and happy. So Yeah, he doesn't come down to Florida though. That's that's the problem. I'm in mm -hmm. the Tampa Bay area and we'd love uh -huh. to see him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let him know. <laughs> you know another band. I, I don't know. I don't know if you've performed with this band, uh, RPWL Yoki Lang. Do you know that band? No, They're I from don't. Germany. They 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 started out as a Pink Floyd tribute band, and now yeah. they write all their own music, and they sound incredible. But the the really cool thing about it, Yoki sounds just like David Gilmour. Well, if you close okay. your eyes, you can't tell the difference. But he sounds like yeah. a younger David Gilmour. Okay. Yeah, and 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 they're really popular. You know, they're more popular overseas than they are in the U.S. But I, I could see you, you know, performing with them as well. Right. Yeah. Um, you got to tell me when you come out and you have your solo in front of fifty thousand people. I talked to John mm -hmm. Anderson from Yes, and his best moment was when he sings "Soon, Oh Soon, the Light" after the Gates of Delirium, and he comes walking out with his acoustic guitar and he sings. What is what's going through your head when you you're doing your solo? Well, when I started it, when I first started doing it, I mean, I'm a contralto. You can hear I have a very deep voice. Yes. I still I don't know how I do it. <laughs> I should not by any right be able to sing that song that high. Um, so when I first started doing it, of course, I was a bit in my head just mm -hmm. about the technical side of it. Right. But once I got that down, um, that song is pure emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, having sung it for like 30 years, uh, I'm just... The reason, if I may say, that you cry when I sing is because I am trying to open myself up as a as a pathway, as mm -hmm. a conduit for what I told you about, for right. that just pure essence of sadness mm -hmm. that that part embodies. And I think about Richard, and I think about Claudia, and I think about my husband who passed away in yes. 2015. I'm sorry uh, about that, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. And then I don't think about anything. I just, mm -hmm. I, I had uh, a great teacher, um, do you know who Werner Erhard is? Name sounds familiar. Yeah, he yeah. started Est back in the 70s, okay. Erhard right. Seminar Show. Okay. Uh, he's kind of like my uncle. And um, he had a saying once that in the presence of pure art, the artist disappears and all that remains is the art. So True. basically, I try to disappear mm -hmm. and just let the song come through me. So... Does that answer your question? Oh, yeah. It, it goes deep <laughs> into your soul, you know, and not only that, you think about your own mortality when yeah. that happens, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I must say that I'm I'm actually in Portland, Maine right now with Brit okay. Floyd, and uh, I'm singing, I have the, the great privilege of singing that as a duet with uh, Eva, uh, Eva Avila, uh, who is just phenomenal mm -hmm. and we complement each other quite well i mean i sing it with my sister a lot also yeah. um but eva is just phenomenal and um the arrangement uh the duet arrangement is my arrangement mm -hmm. uh, i originated it with my sister with the australian pink floyd actually um so that's a a cool rendition yeah i've, I've interviewed uh is it Jason? Jason Sol Salford, the keyboardist. Yeah. From Australian Pink Floyd. Uh-huh. Yeah, good guy. Really good guy. Well, yeah. My, my uh, Pink Floyd connection, uh, the, the guy said I got close to with, you know, was uh, Ginger Gimwara, who's a Facebook friend. Yes. And I, I've interviewed her with her book. The big yeah. book. She's got it Yes. <laughs> Guy Pratt, of course, Carmine Appies, who sung on, he was he played drums on um, Dogs of War. I know. Uh -huh. Tony Levin, who I think was also Dogs of War, and Rick Wills. Uh -huh. Rick Wills was, you know, Rick, right? He uh -huh. was a he was a uh, best man at David's 
I think first wedding, but Rick oh, lives. Li Rick lives here. He lives close to oh. me here. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, has... I'm out here in Portland with Britt Floyd. Uh, we did last night, and we're doing a second night tonight, and then tomorrow we're in Burlington, Vermont. And then I'm heading down your way. I'm going to Miami to go oh, out cool. on Cruise to the Edge with Dave Kersner. Oh, wow. Dave's great, isn't he? Yeah. I love yeah. Dave. We, we work together quite a bit. Yeah. And in fact, on uh, the last song on Black Floyd is a song mm -hmm. called Cocoon, and I wrote that with Dave. Oh, wow. Yeah, you guys mesh well together. He talks about you all the time, by the way. He does? Oh, yes, oh, he does. <laughs> yeah, Dave likes me because I can hang with the guys. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, what is what is going on? There, there's some rumors around talking yeah. about the fishermen. <laughs> yeah, what about it? What is that all about? Did it was did everybody thinks that it was a real band? I mean, it was you, well, David, you. Gary Wallace, Guy Pratt, John Karen, uh, uh -huh. Rachel Fury, Richard uh -huh. Wright, and Scott Page, and Matan Taylor. <laughs> Is that what, yeah. what, what is that? So basically, we would, you know, a la Spinal Tap, we would play the Enormo <laughs> Dome in town. And then after the gig, we would sneak off to some little pub and play R&B standards. And, you know, a lot of people would have just come from our show and then oh, they wow. go out to have a drink after the show. And then they look up on the stage and there we are just getting really drunk and doing <laughs> bad R&B. And we would just do it to unwind. And it was a lot of fun. And there's a couple of recordings that are running around on YouTube. You can find the fishermen and it's hilarious. It's really sloppy and bad. <laughs> yeah, but it's fun. That's the main thing. Yeah, oh, we had a blast. Are you kidding? Oh, and in yeah. fact, there were sometimes um, <laughs> The, the 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 middle of house mixing desk was this like three tiered behemoth mm -hmm. um, scaffolding, and the VIP guests would sit there, and the mixing desk was there, and all that. But underneath, there was all this negative space. Mm -hmm. So some of the crew guys made it a little clubhouse, and like somebody put a couch in there, and then somebody put like these this like spinning colored lights in there, and somebody made a sign. They dubbed it the Donkey's Knob was the name of it. And so we started sneaking in there like during the show and like playing and then like after the show having little parties in there. Right. So, you know, the fishermen also, you know, kind of jammed in there a couple of times. You should sell T-shirts with, with, with <laughs> everybody on the T-shirt, you know. You saw a million of them. That's so awesome. I got to talk about Blue, Blue Pearl. I love okay. that band. You guys are incredible. Thanks. Um, Martin Glover, uh, who goes by youth, him and me are yes. almost the same age there. Uh, oh my God. You know, I listen to all the, all the music from Blue Pearl. Is that oh, possible you. again? Are you going to, can you come back? Well, we have a whole second album ready to go. And as okay. a matter of fact, uh, I am flying to London March the 26th, I'm doing a show with youth. He's put out a thing, uh, a song called Iron Horse featuring the poetry of Allen Ginsberg. Oh, wow. So I'm going to be performing with him. And let's just say I don't want to jinx it, but um, <laughs> we have a pretty important meeting. So good. stay tuned. Good, good. Because we've been working on this for the last like 11 or 12 years. And uh, hmm. I think. I That's think finally time. we may get it to, yeah, because we were doing it on our own, you know, and yeah. I'd fly in when I could and we'd work mm -hmm. on some stuff. And so hopefully it will finally be released. You won a Grammy Award, a Best Reggae Album. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, with Toots and the Madoffs. That was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. And, and he did, he he was in a band with, uh, called Killing Joke. Uh, he I still is. Paul McCartney they, was in that, right? No. No? no, Paul McCartney was in the the Fireman. Oh, the Fireman. That's right. Not Killing Joke. Yeah, You're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Killing Joke is a is a really classic punk band, mm -hmm. and um, sadly, Jordy, the guitarist, um, just passed away. A oh. Massive cerebral hemorrhage. Oh. He was he was a force of nature. So mm. I'm not sure about what's going to happen now for Killing Joke, but you know they've been touring recently.
Really? Huh. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What was it? What's it like working with uh, Martin? I mean, you guys, you guys <laughs> mesh really well. No, that's why it's good <laughs> because we, we butt heads like an old married couple. And uh, yeah, we fight a lot. <laughs> you really? It, that's funny. It's that fire and that tension that actually makes things go great. Although I will say the first song we ever wrote together was Naked in the Rain. And that was mm -hmm. just like, boom. He played me the backing track and I sat down and wrote the lyrics in about 15 minutes and it was done. But yeah, we 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 have gone through quite a lot in the last 30 years. Mm. That's interesting. Well, I mean, if you think about it this way, too, when I started, I was quite a neophyte. You know, I didn't really know a lot about anything. I just had instinct. Yeah. And now I know a lot. <laughs> and youth still wants to treat me sometimes like I'm that little neophyte who doesn't yeah. really know much about oh, anything. And, okay. you know, I'm like, um, well, I actually know a lot about songwriting yeah. now. Mm. So, um, let me do my thing. <laughs> a little chauvinistic, huh? <laughs> I didn't say it. You said it. Yep, yep. <laughs> I could never get like that. Me and me, and my wife, we've been married over 40 years now. We're equal partnership. And oh, I just say, yes, dear, whatever you want, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned that's my lesson. <laughs> women really women rule, and I, I'm not, I'm proud to say that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we kind of do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I got I, it, it, Pink Floyd was into Blue Pearl because you did a live with David Gilmore and Rick Wright, right? That's right. And oh. in fact, when we recorded that, well, I, you know, I asked Richard if he'd play on it, and he got very excited. He said, "I'm going to play on a pop record." <laughs> <laughs> That's and funny. Uh, we were recording at uh, this funny old studio called Barrack Street Studios in Soho in London. Mm -hmm. And in Soho, you know, a lot of the buildings are very tall and narrow. Mm -hmm. So they had to put the Hammond on one floor and then run the cables down the stairwell and the Leslie amp and the floor on the floor below. Um, and I am still to this day, when I hear that opening chord that he plays, I'm just so proud that he's on my music and uh, david as well obviously that solo on that song uh, it's just classic david that bluesy tasty just i love it and the video was directed by storm thorgerson oh really wow yeah Who did hypnosis. all the covers yeah that's right and uh yeah. he said doug you can't afford me so i'll do you a favor <laughs> and um he you did do great voices by the way <laughs> Uh, thank you. I'm a voiceover actress. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I, I just lost my train of thought because I was really enjoying your your voices. Oh, well, thank you. I, I, well, I was, the what the the uh, the songs I really love. I mean, Mother Dawn was one of my uh -huh. favorites. Thank you. Yeah. And do you know I went on to re-record a duet of that with Billy Idol on Cyber with Billy Idol. No, I didn't know that. No. Yeah, because he cyberpunk was a album before its time right particularly in the marketing of it because it was really when the internet was fairly new right and he was really about marketing it through the internet and it actually came with the cd rom and all this stuff that nobody was ready for and mm -hmm. you know everybody still wanted him to do rebel yell and he wanted to delve into techno a little bit which is why i wound up all over the album yeah and um i'm on like six songs on that album and i stayed at his house for like six weeks and what i call billy land because he has this beautiful house up at the, in the hollywood hills that you know there's a main house and then i was in the, the little guest house which is over this little um like a bridge over mm -hmm. the pool it just you know it's a ridiculous compound rock star compound um and robin hancock produced it um, so we were sitting there, uh, you know, I was doing backing vocals on a lot of his stuff and he did a song called heroin that I'm featured on. And there's, uh, if you go on YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, heroin live in London, uh, you can find it, um, with me singing it live with him, but we were trying to figure out what we should sing as a duet. And we were looking at different things and 
and he really liked Mother Dawn. And he said, well, why don't we do that? That, that sounds perfect. We should do that song. <laughs> and uh, and I thought, well, geez. and he started singing. And he and it was like, that's a Billy Idol singing. <laughs> my oh, my God. I'm singing <laughs> on the fire. And I'm like, yeah. So we did that. <laughs> Although I like my version better, to be honest. <laughs> we did a great video of that we shot in the south of France. Is that on YouTube? Is that on YouTube? Yes. The, oh, yeah. Yes, I'll it check is. it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's when I went into a, a harder sort of techno look. And right. I'm in like full on black leather and side yeah. of my head shaved. Oh, yeah, yeah. I loved it. I loved your look. Thank you. You know, you're a beautiful woman, okay? Oh, but in your you younger know. day, you were very, very sexy. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. Hey, I'll see wow. you Yes, you about? are. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, that's one thing about uh, my move to Italy, I must say. Um, you get they love so older women, <laughs> and they, they, they love older women, and they love black women. So, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm on dating apps, and guys consistently in their mid 30s or you don't need dating apps come on all the people you know it makes it much easier it yeah. really does yeah it's just like no 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 yes yeah <laughs> i told uh maria moldar that i had a you know big crush on her back in the day and i said man all the guys had a crush on you he said well where are they where are they all now i don't see them around <laughs> you know i could lend her a couple <laughs> <laughs> um down to you live the world down down to you live the word was another favorite of mine oh no down to down to you is the song oh it's down to no, you you're talking okay. about down to you live on the world oh live the world yeah down to you the right. word I, was a tv show so okay i, I do a performance i think i saw that, that on youtube yeah that, yeah it yeah. is that yeah we're well, wearing thing. a vivian westwood cat suit i got in a lot of trouble for that but i didn't care it why <laughs> have well, you seen it <laughs> um I, you know it it's it's yeah yeah it's kind of held together with spit and a promise so that's okay. It's, it's very <laughs> revealing. Let's just put it that way. It's it's extremely revealing. Yeah. I told Susie Quattro. I'm friends with Susie Quattro. I tell her about oh, her black awesome. outfits, you know, her sexy leather black outfits, you know, and she says, Ray, will you stop that? <laughs> she she loved it. <laughs> she loved it. I, I want to mention you and Dave, you know, um, some, you know, he, he's got the I, the EP. It just uh -huh. recently came out. I believe you're on that, right? On the yes. uh, Heartland Minds Volume One as well. Yes. And are you on the Traveler too? Are you on all the yes. all those? Wow, I'm on all of his stuff. Incredible. <laughs> you can, Most of his stuff. You guys work very well together. I'm yes, we do. We do. We're very simpatico, especially in the studio. We work very, very well together, as well as Fernando Perdomo, who's also yes. on Good all guy. his stuff. Fernando and I have yeah. like psychic shorthand when we work together in the studio, which yeah. is great. He's um he's Cuban and I'm half Cuban. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we get along yeah. good. <laughs> he is one of the most talented human beings I have ever had the pleasure of working with. And he plays everything. He's like a musical savant. Mm. He's amazing. And he's, the sweetest guy. He's everywhere. You yeah. know? He's, he's yeah. everywhere. Hardest working man in show business. He I believe the yeah. from James believe Brown. That. You also worked with, yeah, James Brown was the, definitely. Uh, you and Keith Emerson, too. Keith Emerson you worked with one time, no, did you? No? I did not. Dave I did. thought he was on New World. He was not New World, but. Well, uh, yeah, but I didn't, like, work directly with right, him. Right, right. Dave did. Yep. Uh, and um, Fernando has a project with Carmine, a piece. Yep. It's all very incestuous, especially, see, that's one of the great things about doing Cruise to the Edge that I'm about to do is oh, that, cool. um, and that's actually how Lorelai and I wound up on uh, Steve Hackett's last two albums. Right. Although actually, I think he's come out with a third one since then. Yep. So we're on Underground Railroad, which I am very proud of because um, he saw us singing on Cruise to the Edge and because he was on it. And I ran into him out on the dock in uh, Costa Maya or something. And he said, yeah, you and your sister are proper singers. <laughs> and so he asked us, he said that he was, he'd been to the 
uh, South, you know, the mm -hmm. South of the United States and been to some slave plantations and was reading this book called Underground Railroad, which right. I actually, he signed it and gave it to me. But um, he was very moved by what he'd seen. So he wrote this song about, you know, um, the Civil War and about the Underground Railroad and about slavery in the United States. Mm -hmm. And he wanted two Black American singers on it. So he chose us. Awesome. <clears throat> Do you know Eric Bibb by any chance? Blues, I guy, don't... blues guy. He's a folk blues so. guy. His, his father uh, marched with Martin Luther King okay. and alongside Dick Gregory was there. And we hit it off because yeah. I knew Dick Gregory. He was a good customer of mine. Oh, nice. I, I'm okay. originally from the Washington, D.C. area, and, and Dick Gregory lived in D.C. Okay. But he, he's, you know, oh, he was very much into the movement. His father was. Um, he wrote a song uh, about a tra tragedy that happened here in Florida, of all places, where um this these bunch of white guys killed like like uh I think it was like 50 African American kids mm. moms God. it was all because the wife of someone lied and said mm. you know she had an affair with an African American man but she lied right. because she did, didn't want of to course. her husband know that she was fooling right. around right that was horrible but he wrote yeah. a gorgeous song about this beautiful mm. song it was on his latest album i just mm. want to know if you knew eric or not he's, he's a really no, cool guy i don't i'll have to look him up yeah he's cool um snowy white and jackie lomax yes what's up what's up there well uh actually with fernando uh he has done some albums like we did ram on which was a tribute to, you know, Ram, the Wings album. Right. Uh, and then he did another one, uh, a Beatles one, and I'm singing lead on Come Together and Snowy is playing guitar. Awesome. Yeah. Like I said, it's all very incestuous. Did, and of course, you know, Snowy and Pink Floyd. Did, did you ever think you'd be this uh, influential in the prog community? No. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am known as the prog queen now. Yes, definitely. So, no, I had no idea. It's amazing. It's, it's huh? pretty nice. And the fact that here it is, you know, the 30th anniversary of Pulse, and I'm still doing it. It's it's quite a privilege, actually. Yes. I'm I'm very I, I have to I, I'm very humbled by the fact that I am part of this legacy mm -hmm. and I don't lose sight of the fact that it's a absolute privilege to be able to say that and i'm very very grateful to you know david gilmore for seeing something in me mm -hmm. and the late great steve o'rourke actually i owe steve something huge because <clears throat> after i had to go on a two-week probation period when i first started right. with floyd because i had never been on a tour before and they wanted to make sure that i could handle it but also um they previously had a backing vocal section called the Blackberries, which were these three black women. Mm -hmm. And they would do a run of shows and then take a break and do a run of shows and take a break. And then when they came back to do another run of shows, one of them was missing. And it turned out that during the breaks, she had been committing strong arm robberies at gunpoint, <laughs> oh, walking over geez. gas stations with her boyfriend. And so she didn't come Gosh. back because she was in jail. Uh, oh uh, my goodness. So they wanted to make sure that I was legit. <laughs> so, um, after the two week period and I passed with flying colors, um, we had a little party in Steve's room, I guess it was. And um, Steve came to me and he said, Doug, we've got all the money in the world. We can hire whomever we like. And we chose you. And that vote of confidence actually boosted my voice. Mm -hmm. My voice got bigger as a result of that. So I will always love him for that. He was such, he was really intense. Uh, a lot of people thought he was a bastard because he could be, yeah. but um, he was also incredibly kind. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love him and I will always love him. Dave, David seems like a laid back guy. Is he pretty laid back guy? Yeah. 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 He is. He's very quiet. Um, yeah. A lot of people don't realize, but he's actually quite shy. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. He, he seems like he's almost retired. If you see the videos of him at home with his family. Yeah. <laughs> like he he's really enjoying touring. home life. Yeah. yeah he, he hates touring. So, uh, I mean, uh, he's recording now, so I don't know what's going to happen there, but stay tuned. <laughs> I heard rumors of a solo album. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, he's posted about it. So, yeah. I still love his first solo album. Yeah. You know, that, that was my favorite. You know, Rick Wilson yeah. on that one, too. And On an Island is a great album, too. Yeah, it is. It's a great album. I agree. Do you ever get involved <laughs> with the uh, kind of feud between him and Richard? I mean, uh, Roger. Richard, Roger. Yeah. No. No. Good for you. <laughs> I ain't in it. <laughs> As they say, not my circus, not my monkeys. Yeah. Roger's got to quiet down a little bit. He's getting a lot of flack from a lot of people. <laughs> I don't really talk about him. Yeah. I've never met him. Oh, you never, you really? You never met Roger? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, here's the closest I ever came to meeting Roger. Mm -hmm. We were at uh, the International Music Awards. So Pink Floyd had a table and mm -hmm. <laughs> it had an open bar. So everybody was hammered. And uh, we're sitting at this table, this round table, and Roger walks by with sunglasses on indoors at night. And he goes to walk right past the table and not acknowledge anyone. Oh, and Gary Wallace was <clears throat> drunk as a fart. And so he just didn't, he gave zero Fs. And so he just stuck, <laughs> stuck his foot out and tripped Roger. Wow. And Roger trips. And we all just fell out laughing. <laughs> And he just kind of, you know, shook himself off and just kept going. Didn't even acknowledge that it happened. Oh, my goodness. G Ginger told me a few things about, you know, the past. But, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Different personalities. I'm, I'm you know, it was, it was amazing they got together for that final show, you know. Yeah, it is. And I almost cried at that, watching that as well. Because it's so, it's so great to see the band's, the original band get back together again. Really yeah nice. yeah unfortunately that will never happen again It'll never happen again no no it now, just I'm, gonna blow you, I'm gonna blow away you're gonna get blown away with this comment now the best song you've ever done <clears throat> i'm writing a book I, i'm an author i've written several books but i'm but i'm actually writing one that's it kind of mirrors george Orwell's 1984 okay so it, it's gonna take place in uh 2040 is the name of the book's gonna be 2040 okay if it's turned into a movie i gotta have this song as probably the title song the soundtrack and that's witness the end of the world oh thank oh you oh my god what I, that song blew me away by it's you and days between stations that's right produced by billy sherwood from yes i know billy Yes, yeah. I didn't know he produced that. Wow. Yeah, he did. I'm going to see him in two days. He's, he's coming incredible. on the Tell him I said hello. He's a good guy. I will do. Yeah, he's yeah. lovely. He's a sweetheart and he's very talented. He's a great producer. I liked working with him. He's very precise. Um, but wait, wait until you hear the next single from Days Between Stations that I'm singing on. Because that one is something. This, I'm very this, proud that of That song deserves a Grammy. I'm serious. Oh. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, I like it a lot. I like it. And the video came out great. And so Breathe, the next one that's coming out, uh, also the video is pretty spectacular. When is that coming out? Uh, I don't know. It sh like, should be any day now. Eric Nielsen has been, um, he shot it and is producing it and is uh, editing it. So I've been waiting to see any day. It should be out. So keep keep your eyes open for it. Love it. Well, that's probably one of the best songs of the year for me. Oh, thank and you. And the so video much. is so awesome. The video is cool yeah, too. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? It's great. I love it, man. Love it. All right, I got to talk about this. Um, okay. Eels. Yes. <laughs> Yes, we just, had, <laughs> we just had the 40th anniversary of that. I saw that. That How cool was that? That was awesome. You're great we, A that. lot of us in the cast are still very good friends. Good, good. 
I love In that fact, movie. Michael Michael Nori is one of my best friends. I love him to death. He's such a sweetheart, mm -hmm. such a good guy. Uh, and um, yeah, we did uh, uh, like a fan convention that uh, for the 40th anniversary, and that was cool. Um, but I still talk to Malcolm Daynar and um, Stacy Pickren and Michael and Kyle. Uh, often we we talk a lot how about flash dance too <laughs> I, I i'd say that ship has sailed but you did know. you see that did you see the hilarious t-mobile commercial on the super bowl no i didn't Jason see that Momoa? i didn't see that oh you should look for it t-mobile super bowl jason momoa just, yeah i'm not going to say anything else <laughs> okay I'll, I'll pull it up I love you guys exercising in that movie, you know, with uh, Joan Jett. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a good scene. <laughs> yeah. Well, so what's happened with your acting career? Are you, do you still want to be involved? It sounds like you're so too damn busy to do anything. No, I just shot a movie um, a few months ago in Italy. Really? With um, Oscar winning Italian director Gabriele Salvatore. Yeah. Who won for uh, Best Foreign Language film in 1994 i believe mm -hmm. from mediterraneo okay uh i had shot a, an audition piece for this movie that i really wanted to get called conclave but i didn't get the part right but apparently he saw the reel and cast me from that um it's a film called napoli new york uh about two little kids in the 1940s who run away from naples to new york hmm. and the scene that i'm in um the little girl wakes up in this, she's been sleeping in like an abandoned car. She's dirty and hungry and uh, she wanders over because she hears some music. Um, originally, the scene was supposed to be, uh, she sees this little boy who's my son mm -hmm. and he's eating a piece of bread. So he gives her some of the bread because obviously she's hungry. And I like tell him, you know, like, who's that little girl, dirty little girl, get away from her. Uh, but uh, and there was supposed to be a blues guitarist who was supposed to be singing and playing mm -hmm. uh, out on the porch while, you know, I'm putting up laundry. Uh, at the last minute, the guy they cast was unable to do it. So they recast the part with a guy who looked the part, but he could not sing or play guitar. So they asked me to sing. So uh, my scene got a little extended. So I'm singing the early morning blues. In oh, this wow. Movie. Yeah. Is that going to be shown in the U.S. or I guess yeah, yeah, no, yeah. maybe Netflix? Yeah, uh, I I have no idea. I'm waiting to hear when they finish it, and I'm hoping right. that we go to the Venice Film Festival and maybe can. That would be nice. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, you are so talented. You know, there's there's so many things I could see you doing. <laughs> you know, you should be all over Hollywood for sure. You know, well, they should be you. they should be utilizing you. What is wrong with them? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one other thing that I'm doing now, uh, which is my newest endeavor, is I'm mm -hmm. writing my autobiography. Good. Good, good, good. Are you doing it yourself? Or do you have? I am. Good. Well, we'll get you on again. Okay. And we're going to promote the hell out of that book for sure. Okay. Great. Because I, I, I interview good. a lot of authors. You know, I've got, a, I got a, a comedy TV pilot ready. And I've been oh, trying cool. to sell it. And I actually have a character, and it would be perfect for you. So, oh, really? If you can get somebody interested in my pilot, you know, it's based in, okay. in Washington D.C. I I grew up in my in the family business in D.C. It was retail electronics, and it was just all okay. about me growing up with all the characters in the store, you know. And it's it's based on my my first book. So. Yeah, if you get anybody interested where I can actually pitch it, you're in. Cool. Okay, I'll and see what I can do. It's a good do. part. It's a really good part. It'll be a fun part. It's funny. Can I ask, <laughs> by the way, did you self-publish your books or do you have a publisher? Um, I self-publish my books. Okay. But the next book is going to be definitely uh, the old-fashioned way. Because okay. there's a lot of action in it. And, you know, like everybody dies in it. The White House is going to blow <laughs> up. The capital is oh going to blow up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be crazy. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> a lot of action. <laughs> okay. So, uh, do we cover everything? What else? What else you got going on besides? I think that's about it. That's it. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've got shows coming up later in the year. I've got some big shows celebrating right. their mm -hmm. anniversary of Paul's uh, in Holland coming up in the Netherlands uh, in September with a band called Pink Floyd Project. Okay. Netherlands. Um, but yeah, I'm just out here road dogging it, doing mm -hmm. what I've been doing. Well, tell David he, he's got to put you in his solo album. <laughs> it, it wouldn't be Pink Floydish without you. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm trying. <laughs> Here's your last question. Okay? okay. I ask everybody this question. I get some really interesting answers. Okay. You had to feel the dream's wish. That's one of my favorite movies to uh, perform, collaborate with anyone from the past or present. Who would that be? Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell. Wow. Absolutely. Hands it down. Awesome. I would give anything. And in fact, the first song on Black Floyd, Gods mm -hmm. and Lovers, the song I wrote with John Karen, is yes. kind of my ode, my tribute to Joni. Really? If you listen to it, you'll understand why. Yeah. She's finally getting some accolades now, you know, yes. after all these years. Yes. Yeah. She yes. had a rough life, too, but I understand. No kidding. Yeah. <clears throat> and she almost died a, few, a couple of times. Yep. That's That's very sad. I wanted to ask you about Black Floyd. How did that all come about? How did, did, well, how did you, how did you, you know, put it together? And we decided we wanted to do it because, you know, we've been singing Pink Floyd music for so long. Uh, and, <clears throat> you know, the name Pink Floyd comes from uh, two Black blues musicians. Right. And um, we're Black. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, we, you know, pulled our friends together. And we worked on it for quite some time. You know, mm -hmm. Dave started out being the main producer and then we stepped up and then David Fowler, who works, you know, with Lorelai in the Australian Pink Floyd, stepped in as well. So the four of us produced it. Um, and then because Lorelai got stuck in the during the pandemic at Dave, Dave Fowler's house in London, mm -hmm. right? they were locked down. So they were able to finish it. Yeah. Is there going to be a, a follow-up to that album? You think? Uh, we hope so. Absolutely. Yeah. We've been talking about it. We just got to put it together. You know, you'd be incredible in two other genres, um, R&B and blues. Well, and I do jazz and blues shows. I just did mm -hmm. one a couple weeks ago. I'm waiting to hear back from um, my favorite one of my favorite gigs is called Jazz by the Pool. It's a summer mm. series at a spa hotel called Tempre Storici in the north of Italy, near oh, wow. Venice, where they have music out by the pool under the moonlight right. in the summer. It's fabulous. And I do jazz and blues. Um, yeah, R&B. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to actually also find a backer to do uh, a, a guy that I work with, Les Camacho, wants to produce me doing a jazz album recording at Capitol in the, you know, nice. this classic room, but that's going to cost about 70 K. So if you know anybody with $70,000, David Gilmore. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'll pay you back Dave. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> when the album gets big, you know, the song, you know, is a Grammy. I'll pay you back. <laughs> I, I want to say, first of all, very special thanks to Trinity Houston. Yes. Uh, CEO and creative director at IM3 Global. And she arranged this interview today with Durga McBroom. And also David um, Maniason also helped me out. David's a great guy. I love, love David. Yes. He's going to help me with some future projects as well. Durga, great. thank you so much for being on the show. This is a big thrill for me. Oh, thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here. You're incredible. I love you. Um, keep doing what you're doing. I can't wait Thank for the you. book. Can't wait for the new music. And uh, we'll have you on again. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, Durga. Thank you so much. God bless you. You take care. Bye-bye. Right, you too. Bye-bye.